pun, right on top of this interest. This actually should be something that you're relatively uh, interested in. I don't mean that as a pun. Relatively excited about this because in not so very many years, what do you guys, eighth grade? When you get up high school, you will go to college. And odds are, you're either going to have to go in debt to go to college or be very smart for college, which as we saw at the beginning of this class is not going to happen. Or your parents have the kind of cash, like your parents are made of money. I don't know which one that is here, but uh, we are talking about interest. And there's good interest and there's bad interest. You will hopefully be a little smarter today than you were before. Did you ever wonder how banks make money? Because your parents, if they have some extra cash, they will put it away into a savings account. You know, let's say they had $50,000. They put it in the bank. The bank keeps their $50,000. But your parents at any time can take out the $50,000, right? So how does a bank make money? Because they're giving a bank $50,000, but the bank has to give it right back to them. For example, if I gave Grace $100, Grace has a lot of money, but if I made Grace give me $100 back, how much money has Grace actually earned? Zero. So how does a bank make money? Keep on. We have to pay for the check. Yeah, I don't think the $3 you're paying for 100 scan of 100 checks to make them a whole lot of cash off of. I don't believe they make it on the pure incidentals. I don't believe that's true. They may make some, but I don't think so. As a matter of fact, do your parents even have checks anymore? Too many parents write, I mean, very few checks anymore. Usually it's on a little debit card. They don't have to. And, and besides that, you can buy your checks from somebody else. You don't have to buy your checks from... Most of your parents, I'll bet, buy their checks from like checks on something online, or they just give them the numbers and do that. Most of that. How do banks make money? Interest. Interest, both good and bad. Here's the deal, okay? If you have one hundred thousand dollars, okay, and you put that, you put your hundred thousand dollars in the bank. Okay, believe it or not, the bank will give you interest for that. In other words, for you giving the bank the opportunity to hold all this money, they will give you interest. Let's just say, and this is a kind of where it's at, let's just say the bank pays you 1% interest a year. Okay. Which means, ladies and gentlemen, you give the bank $100,000. At the end of the year, the bank is going to give you your $100,000 back plus 1% of that, which is, move the decimal over, what is 1% of about $100,000? $1,000. So, plus, at the end of the year, the bank would give you back $101,000. Now, again, how in the world is a bank making money if they are giving you money for keeping their money? Well, this is the good interest. When you have money, people will pay you to, to keep your money. And the reason for that is because of the bad interest. Okay? Because a bank is not only a place out there that keeps your money, the bank is a place that will loan you money or give you money. But they don't give you money for free. Okay? They're going to take, let's say I want to buy a house and I need a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. What in the world is all that about? I will borrow my hundred thousand dollars, but the bank says, well, for you to borrow a hundred thousand dollars, I have to charge you interest on your hundred thousand dollars. Let's say it's a five percent interest. That means when you pay the bank back the hundred thousand dollars, you have to give them back one hundred. Well, five percent of this is five thousand dollars. You have to give the bank back one hundred five thousand dollars. 
So the bank makes it money like this. The difference between the interest that it gives you for keeping its money and the interest it charges you for loaning you money is the money that the bank gets to keep, which in this case would end up being around $4,000. Okay. Now, let, let's think about this. Mostly the things, and we're talking all bad interest today, unfortunately for you, because if you look at the sheet that I gave you, it gave you the top three places where people borrow money. And look at the very first page. Don't, don't flip any pages. The top three places people borrow money for are for their mortgage. They borrow money in order to buy a car. And a lot of times they borrow money using their credit cards. Let's just talk about this, and I believe we'll actually have to continue this at the end of the day because we just don't have enough time. We had you people, well, that's not good. Anybody know anything about mortgage rates? First of all, write this down. Uh, interest, ladies and gentlemen, equals PRT, which means this. I'll write it out in words. Interest equals the principal, that's an L, -E, not P-A-L, times the rate times the time. Okay, and anytime you hear that word principal, the word principal means how much money you're talking about. Okay, rate is how long, I'm sorry, rate is what, as a percentage, I'm sorry, and time is how long. So let's look at your typical mortgage. Ryan Connor, the average time of a mortgage. Any, any idea? No. When your parents buy a house, they usually take X amount of years to pay it off. The common, most common one is, anybody? 15 is probably second only to 30 years. Okay. 15 and 30. Let's go with 30 just because. It all depends on if they think they can pay it back. Now, let's talk about the rate. Rate is a percentage. I can tell you in the last five or six years, the interest rates are as low as they've ever been in history because we had the big crash, and you'll hear about it all the time. You ever turn on the radio and they talk about the Fed's raising interest rates? No, forget it. Anybody know what's about the, the typical rate right now? And it's, it's incredibly low. Fantastic. Maggie, what's your guess? Nope, way you're super high compared to what they were. What they were. Anybody? Right now, you could probably get a rate at about, well, it's probably still 3%. I'm going to go 4% just because. Back in the early 70s or whatever, these rates, these rates were like in the 18 to 19 to 20% range. They were huge. Okay, which you don't understand because we haven't talked about how much money you're talking about. Okay, and then what do you suppose the principal is? If you're buying a house in Yorkville these days, anybody know what a typical house in Yorkville costs? Anybody again? We've got to take care to speculate, Ryan. Alright, let's go high. Let's go 200, which isn't adequate. I mean, 200 is probably an average, a median thing. Now you can't, you're not allowed really to borrow all this. Usually you have to have what we call down payment, which is some money, but we're just going to go with this. Okay, so here we go. To find out how much interest, you know, a bank gives you this $200,000 and they loan it to you for 30 years. You get 30 years to pay it back at 4% interest. How much will your $200,000 house cost you after 30 years? Well, you stick it, to find out what the interest is, and the interest doesn't include the principal, so you have to add that back on at the end. You take your numbers. Interest equals your principal, which is $200,000, times your rate, 
which in this case it's 4%, so it's 0.04, times your time, which is 30 years. Somebody got the math on that? Ah, I like to fire that in your calculator. It's 200, well, this would be 30 times that would be 6 million, 6 million times 0.04. Number for me? Is it 240,000? 240,000 dollars. Now, mind you, this children, mind you, mind you, this is just the interest that doesn't include giving the bank back the original 200,000 dollars that you borrowed. So, your $200,000 house is going to cost you $200,000 because it's the principal. And to that, you have to add $240,000 in interest. So, your $200,000 house, in the end, ends up costing you $440,000. dollars the bank is going to make $240,000 off of you. Granted, it's, it's 30 years. So how much are they making every year in interest? About $6,000, right? No, $240,000, $8,000 in interest a year? Eight times 30? Is that right? Yeah, that'd be right. It's 4%, 4% of 200,000 is $8,000. So that's just an interest. So your your goofy little house, you know, like I said, and these are unbearably low. If this was 20%, you multiply this times five, multiply that by five. You pay, you pay over a million dollars in interest at 20% after all the setup. That's why, Alex, when you talked about the 15-year one, if you're only borrowing it for 15 years, okay, you can knock the amount of interest in half, and you're only going to end up paying $120,000 in interest. Okay. So that's that's the beauty of uh, interest. Now, why are credit cards such a bad deal? Credit cards are a bad deal because their rate is not 4%. Anybody know what going credit card rates are? Credit card rates are somewhere in the 20% range. And they don't charge you every year. Credit card bills come due every month, and it's not 20% a month because they'd have to they'd have to take the 20% divided by 12 because there's 12 months in the year. We will talk more on that when we return at the end of the day.